Sometimes having your own home lab can be a drag. Why did this switch only have one power supply? What a letdown. Do you hate it when you unplug the wrong cord that you didn't want to unplug? I didn't want to unplug that power cord. What about all those cat pictures I was downloading? Or when your battery backup doesn't work because you're too lazy to fix the batteries. Oh no, my battery backup didn't work. Well, I have the solution for you. And this is the Geist ABCN 102-102R20 ST5. Quite the model number. And what this does is basically simulates the ability to have a redundant power supply. So this uses two different circuits to feed power to the built-in power strip here, you see. And what will happen is, is if your primary circuit goes down, it'll switch to your secondary circuit. And on top of that, it uh, also has a meter on the front, which will tell you your current power factor, amps, volts, and watts in use. And I just kind of stumbled across this with some recycling stuff I got in and didn't realize what it was at first until I looked it up and I was like, oh dang, this is actually kind of cool. So it's not truly going to give you redundant power supply capabilities because if your power supply fails, well, sucks to suck. <laughs> but what this does give you is the other advantage of redundant power supplies, which is backup circuits. So like in my office here, I have circuit on panel D, breaker 10, and um, it's uh, tandem breakers, so tandem breaker B. And uh, I have panel D, breaker 10, tandem breaker A. So I can plug this into two different feeds, and if one of the feed goes down, well, I still have power. And for a variety of reasons why that could happen, maybe you overloaded the circuit, or maybe your breaker failed, or maybe, you know, if you're fortunate, um, you have two different supplies of power, and one of the supplies went down, which is, would be your primary. Now, granted, you could have battery backups, like I do, but nothing says those battery backups won't fail or maybe one will run out of battery faster than the other. So yeah, this is a great way to basically give yourself a little bit more protection on devices that don't have redundant power supplies, which in my case would be my modem and my switches because my servers in my rack, which are currently obscured, well, most of my servers, these three servers have redundant power supplies. So I guess the next thing to do is to get this installed. So I got it mounted now. It's not officially plumbed in. I kind of have everything haphazardly going here. And currently, this switch is obviously plugged into the auto transfer switch. And for my uh, source A, I'm using this plug strip here. And then source B is plugged into my wall. Uh, they might honestly be on the same circuit for all I know, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so now, uh, let's see if I can zoom out and catch enough. So now you're not going to be able to see me turning on plug switch, but you'll see source A, the light will go out here in a second. But I still have power to my switch because it's running off of this plug here. So if I unplug this plug in the wall, now everything dies. The other cool thing about this is you don't need source A for it to turn on. So I plugged in source B and uh, get, get source A back. Oh no, I lost source B and the switch is still on. So yeah, that's a pretty cool party trick basically. I mean, this now means that things that have single power supplies, I can essentially have a uh, redundant source. And uh, yeah, I think there might be some issues with that readout. Um, I don't think I'm using 1079 watts. 
I wonder if it's upset because I plugged source A in first. Let's see if it resets. Definitely not pulling 27 amps. Hopefully I didn't break that display. It was working at first when I first plugged it back in. <laughs> oh, there we go. That looks a little better. I'm not sure what's going on there. It is possible that plugging plugging this device into uh, the same circuit twice might cause unexpected behavior. But, uh, yeah, it'll be something that I look forward to integrating into my rack. As it sits now, it's probably going to be in limbo. I'm going to coil these up and uh, probably set them on top of this server. Um, like I said, I need to get better ends for these. Uh, these ends are not the right size for the thickness of the cords, so I have to look into that. But... I also need to do a general overhaul and change some stuff around with the current setup. So that'll be for a different video though as um still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I have more servers to choose from so I have even more problems to figure out. But uh, either way, hopefully that was interesting and definitely something to look into if uh, you want to improve the functionality of your rack. But Thanks for watching.